A very good day to you and welcome to the program. Snowy and I are together today. It's a beautiful day on the farm. The clouds are building up. We're looking like maybe having a bit of rain later on. And uh, how is it with you? My dear friend, do you know who your neighbor is? No? Why not? Do you know who lives next door to you? I'm very fortunate where I'm staying at Shalom. Just over there, I've got my youngest son. And just over the road, I've got my youngest daughter. And just over that way there, I've got my oldest son. And just down the road, I've got my other daughter. And then I've got one daughter who's in a city quite far from here. But the rest are all here. I have 11 grandchildren, and it's so nice on ch in church. On a Sunday morning, we've got a church on the farm to see all my neighbors <laughs> together in one place. Who is your neighbor? A good question. If we go to the Word of God in Luke chapter 10 and verse 27, a very well-known scripture, and this is what it says. So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And listen to this part. And your neighbor as yourself. Anyone who needs my compassion, anybody who needs my help, he is my neighbor. Folks, we have got to be more compassionate with one another. We've got to be more forthright. We've got to be more, doesn't matter what race, doesn't matter what culture, doesn't even matter what religion your neighbor is. You have to help him. Jesus tells the story of the Good Samaritan, remember? And I know that road. It goes from Jericho up to Jerusalem. It's not the big highway that you see now. It's a little road that follows that river that goes down from the, that feeds the town of Jericho. And I mean, that man was a, was a stranger going along the road, overtaken by thieves, remember? and left for dead. The priest passed on the one side, the Levite on the other side. By the way, the man was a Jew. And a Samaritan came. A Samaritan is an Arab, by the way. And that man picked him up. He wiped him down. He put him on his donkey. He took him to the nearest hotel. He left him there. He gave the hotelier money. He said, if that's not enough on my way back, I will pay the extra. Jesus told that story. Some of us need to wake up, folks. I've seen some people, when you talk to them about a certain people group or whatever, there's like, like shutters come down over their eyes. These are spirit-filled, born-again Christians. But yet, when it comes to their neighbor, no, no, no. Only the people that belong to my denomination. That is so sad. I'm an evangelist. I've seen that happen too many times. And I want to tell you, often it's uh, denominations that I would never ever think would say that. And the ones that you might think were a bit too traditional, they get stuck in. But the ones who seem to have arrived have got their own program, their own agenda, and they've got no time for you. Who is your neighbor? Well, my neighbor is the man that lives next door to me. My neighbor is the man that's, that's broken down on the side of the road. You know, when I get a puncher, and I stop on the side of the road. It's not the big fancy cars that stop for me. It's some clapped out old pickup with a guy that's got everything tied up with wire and he's the one who helps me. The other guy is actually quite annoyed that I'm blocking the road. He doesn't realize I've got a puncher. I can't get off the road. He just wants to get past because he's going to a certain meeting. He might be a preacher. <laughs> I want to tell you, we're going to get some surprises in heaven, aren't we? Take care of that old lady. Doesn't matter how irritable she is. You don't know the pain that she's in. That's why she's irritable. Take care of that young child. Yeah, but they've got no manners, Angus, because they've got no parents to teach them manners. That's why you're there. Let us look after our neighbor as ourselves. Goodbye.